Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Conspiracy Truth Finders with me, Bob Kiviet. Today, we have a show that, again, it's one of those shows. It's a couple of years in the making. And we have somebody on the show today that I will say, without a doubt, in this country, he is the top expert on something called, believe it or not, anyone out there has never heard about it, the flat earth theory, controversy, claim, mystery, whatever. So just to bring it all full circle here, nice full circle, uh, the earth, um, I heard about the flat earth theory uh, back in 2016. Uh, there was a period of time when I think uh, we were starting to see this emergence of conspiracy theory kind of hit a level that I don't think we really had ever seen before back around 2016. Uh, YouTube channels were jumping heavily on, onto conspiracy theories. And one thing started to grow very, very fast. It's something called the flat earth. Not only did people like Con, you know, Con, uh, Ky Kyrie Irving, excuse me, Kyrie Irving, the basketball player, believe the flat earth was real, but B.O.B., the rapper, musician, he thought it was real. And I'm saying it for the record here. They thought the earth is flat. Now, we've all heard from our earliest days at you know, elementary school by looking at the globe that the earth is a round ball in space. And all the celestial bodies around us are these round globes or stars or basically everything's round. But this theory grew and grew and grew. And the evidence starts now just to give you uh, an understanding of how popular the theory has maintained itself let's look at three recent covers of major major publications giving credence in some way to the idea that the earth is flat uh newsweek uh had a big cover take a look at that People believe the flat, the earth is round, you know, not round. Then, of course, we have the uh, popular science cover. That also was another, you know, uh, major publication, popular science. And the cover of the Skeptic magazine shows what the domed earth or the flat earth looks like, according to people who believe the flat earth theory is correct. Now, I know what people may be thinking, like, wait a minute. We must be living on a globe. Everything says we were living on a globe. Well, you're about to meet someone who is the top expert in America, without a doubt, on the flat earth. Mark Sargent, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Bob. And thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. It's been a while. Mark and I spent a lot of time on the phone. Oh, that had to be over three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. At Again, least. I was trying to get a TV documentary series approved and, uh, you know, uh, sold to a network. Yeah. Um, I didn't have great results with that. I went to a meeting, Mark. I never told you. I went to a meeting, I'll just say, at one of the top production companies I was going to partner on this thing with. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll never forget. I was sitting in, sh sitting in front of two very knowledgeable women in the television business. I would say in there between the 30s and 40s or so in age. Yeah. And I brought up the flat earth. They looked at me with a blank stare. <laughs> I said, you don't know the flat earth mystery or theory is like resonating in society. We have some top people that have talked about it. We've got President Obama had previously talked about it. Yeah. We've got B.O.B., the uh, musician. We've got Kyrie Irving, the basketball player. Uh, even uh, Shaq O'Neal chimed in and talked about it as well. So, Mark, I mean, tell me, generally speaking, what were the reactions to people when you tried to get, I know you tried to get productions made and whatever. What did you experience back in 2003, three, three years ago? We'll get into the current situation, but what did you experience? Well, I can go back even uh, uh, four years ago. In, the, um, in 2015, we had, and I don't mind bringing up names because I'm not a producer, I don't care. Uh, True Television looked at it and, and it was, there was a woman out there, an exec, she's not there anymore, named Rebecca. 
Mm-hmm. And she she was the first people first person to grad, do screen test the whole thing. She's going, this is going to get huge. I am not kidding you. She she was way ahead on this. And, we, you know, we did a sizzle reel for him the whole nine yards. And it was just too early. There just weren't enough people. So she brought into the meeting, you know, the big pitch meeting. <laughs> right. It's like, what what's your pitch, Rebecca? It's like, here it is. Boom, boom, boom. Flat Earth. She was fired. <laughs> She was well, not- well, let me tell you, your, your book, um, first of all, let's get into a couple of things. Yeah. First of all, let's play the commercial. Oh, okay. Mark, commercial from last Mark year. Just, I did a commercial. Yeah. Uh, he'll talk about it in a minute. But look at the commercial Mark just did as a famous flat earther. <laughs> Check this out. Flat earth expert Mark Sargent thinks the moon landing was a hoax. Technically, the moon itself is a hoax. Right, but betting with Sportsbet's new iPhone app? I could do this standing on my head. Thanks, Gravity. Sportsbet's new iPhone app. It's foolproof. So before we get into the evidence and all the reasons that people believe the flat earth is real and all, yeah, Mark, tell me why they contacted you. How did they contact I love pop culture when pop culture is a conspiracy theory and more of that will be coming up in future shows. So this is a really good moment for us. Right. Tell me, tell me about it. They, yeah, this was a mobile app company out of Australia, uh, based in Melbourne. And uh, most people don't know that gambling is completely legal for the entire country. So like the United States, it's, you know, Nevada and, and you know, Indian reservations and stuff right. like that. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Native American reservations. Mm-hmm. But in Australia, it's completely legal. And so they were looking at a new campaign called Foolproof, with different people that were in you know doing what they considered crazy things and when they did that uh they they thought well flat earth is considered probably the most crazy and sorry don't mind the phone and um live tv yeah sorry (laughs) and so they said hey can they called me up and said hey can you be down here in 10 days and i said sure Sure, I'd be, I'd be happy to. So I flew down there and it was a full studio production deal where they had me in there. And we, uh, we shot for three hours on the first day, did stills for the billboards and the buses and stuff. And then the, uh, the second day we did another six hours of video shoot for the commercial. And that segment you saw was a 15 second segment, which aired during the middle of all, it was mostly for sports broadcasts. So during soccer games. And, and, and again, it shows the ubiquitousness, the, the amount of people around the world that have started to believe oh, yeah. the Earth might be flat yeah. and, and, you know, just get to c- cover all your basic um, or some of your basic um, accolades. Let's show the book Mark has on okay. flat Earth. Uh, Courtney, show the book. So Mark gets a little bit of a, you know, send up here and there he is. Yep, there it is. So that's the re- revised version of the book, basically. Uh, well, the first book I released at the beginning, at the end of 2015, called "Just Flat Earth Clues: The Sky's the Limit," and then I was asked if I could do a book for the Dallas conference, for the 2019 conference down in Dallas, Texas. And that's what a flat Earth community conference. All the flat earthers. Yeah, yeah, to big, talk about big, this? Is that a lot totally of speakers there, and they wanted to give away a copy of the book to everybody that went to the conference. And there was like a thousand people there, so there was a little bit of pressure on me. And so uh, I did a wonderful, comprehensive book called, that basically said, "Okay, how we got here from 2015 until now." Everything yeah. that's happened, you know, all the all the celebrities that were involved, all the speakers that were involved, and you know, all the different the the different benchmarks. Of, yeah, and of we're, we're going to try to we're going to try to you know ca- encapsulate you sure. know those five years that we're talking about where right. I got together with you in the middle of that, and then you went off on your own. But I must say, just to bring people back to the ubiquitous popularity of this mystery called the flat Earth. Yeah. We're going to play for you something you remember. You gave me this video, just the opening of it anyway. <laughs> the opening video kind of gives people a good feeling of how popular this mystery was back when we got together three years ago or so. Check it out, everyone. It's still popular, of course, but check this out now. It's the opening, I call it, of the Flat Earth back then, 2016 or so. If I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat. That's worth reporting, but you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. They 
they, they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. These are pictures now of the Earth. Check it out, everybody. Two different pictures. Recognize the Earth. that there is a debate about whether critical the Earth thinking. is round or flat. No, no, no. no. And you let's encourage say, critical thinking by saying there should be a legitimate debate between whether the Earth is round or flat. Because after all, any idiot can walk B.O.B. blowing up Twitter with his theories on the actual shape of the Earth. Rapper B.O.B., perhaps you know him for hits like Airplanes and Nothing on You. He firmly believes that the Earth is flat. He is on a Twitter mission to prove it, and he says he has photographic evidence and that we've been fooled all this time. This thing, it's just a symptom of a larger problem. There's a growing anti-intellectual strain in this country that many, that it may be the beginning of the end of our informed democracy. <laughs> of, of course, in a free society, you can and should think whatever you want. And if you want to think the world is flat, go right ahead. But if you think the world is flat and you have influence over others, as would successful rappers or even presidential candidates, then being wrong becomes being harmful to the health, the wealth, and the security of our citizenry. Now, this is some of the evidence we're going to get into. Yeah. Now, you can see off in a distance things that should not be there on the curved Earth because the curvature causes a uh, disappearing of objects on the horizon, which we'll get into. But I just want to give a little taste of where we're headed here. And these are some of the experiments Mark's been key on. So, Mark, just to lay it out, and Courtney, let's put up this dome. Show the dome to Earth. This is the Truman Show domed Earth. Mark, I didn't, I didn't bring a graphic in of the Earth in the domed Earth theory, but how the sun and the moon. As we're staring at this, just tell us. I mean, this is what you believe to be the actual reality of our yep. earth yep we do not live in a tiny on a tiny little rock covered with water and smoke flying through space and at an impossible velocity in basically a ridiculous universe you are living in a building a structure with walls and a floor and a ceiling and it was so big and so complex and so well built that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till about in almost 1960. Okay, we'll get into the time that that happened, uh, when sure. it would have happened, and why it would have happened back in 1960 when we started to launch rockets and send them up and figure out, oh, my God, look down. It's not the Earth. We'll get to that issue in a second. Sure. Play, do me one favor, Courtney. Show the flat Earth, and let's get a good look at this, the flat Earth floating in space. <laughs> this is what, in some, to some degree, what would, it would look like, the flat Earth floating in space. Yeah. Now, Mark... Yeah. As we keep this up, the Earth on the left, this kind of, I mean, obviously we don't see the dome, but talk about what's on the right side for a second. Just tell us what you see there. Tell us what you think this looks Well, like. uh, this is, by the way, the, the most common misconception of the flat Earth. This was put up almost immediately in 2015, and I don't even remember who the artist was. We didn't do this one, and that was the giant asteroid flying in space, which we nobody in the flat Earth community subscribes to. Uh, we say that there is no space at all. This, you know, the, the movies Thor did us no favors <laughs> with that whole cosmic waterfall thing, you know, that Asgard, which is basically, this might as well be the, the model for Asgard in the, Thor, in the Marvel movies. Okay. Um, Give me one favorite. Yeah. Courtney, go back to the show, the dome dearth one more time. Cause I want to just make sure the dome dearth is what Mark is sort of saying is more accurate so oh, yeah, yeah, that's way, way more accurate. You're right. living in a pressurized, enclosed system. Now, that sounds like someone created that, like an intelligent race created that. Yeah. I mean, just to make sure we're clear, you see that white area around the what we call the flat Earth? Mm -hmm. That's Antarctica, allegedly, right? That's Antarctica. The other continents look pretty much as advertised, but Antarctica is absolutely wrong. It is not this island continent about the size of Australia. It is the outer, it's the beginning of the outer edge. And, and you got to remember, if this is, this isn't even really close to scale, but the Antarctic coastline, it's not like people say, why can't you fall off the edge of the earth? Why is the waterfall? It's like, no, no, no. You're living basically in a lake. 
a big saltwater lake. And the edge, the coastline of Antarctica is just the beginning. It goes thousands okay. of miles inland before. All right, we, have, we have a shot here. Uh, uh, we're going to show the ice wall, an sure. ice wall feeling. This is to show the ice wall surrounding the earth. The, uh, yeah. This would be something analogous. This is not a great example, but it's a good it's example. No, of no, I mean, that's the beginning of it. I mean, that's okay. that's the coastline. So you of see how it's keeping the water in. So imagine yeah. around the entire earth. Yeah. Is and this and no. it also, by the way, most people don't know this about Antarctica. Yeah, the water can, couldn't, even if you had this massive tsunami, the water's not going anywhere because Antarctica is different from any other continent, even the, how mainstream science displays it. Because Antarctica slopes up to, it's a high plateau. It slopes up to about 14,000 feet. And it's 14,000 feet, pretty much the entire, as far as you can go. So we're not talking um, about a wall, that's a wall of 14,000 feet. Yeah, which like starts Empire out at only 200 feet at the coastline, but it goes up and up and up and up. I mean, that water is going nowhere ever. Now, Mark, you know that anyone watching right now that does it, that's not versed in the flat earth, and we're about, we're about to get into the evidence now, the evidence that we can let, you know, kind of talk about. Sure. They, they think we're nuts. You know, they think we're talking about some fantasy that can't be real. Right. Let's just go back for a second to the idea you said that if this is a flat earth, it's a building, it's yeah. a structure. Yeah. Someone would have constructed it. Yep, well, not us. What are we looking at when we see the stars? You are looking at the ceiling of a planetarium. And I know that dates me. I, I know you're probably young and Courtney, she's like all of 24. Well, hold on, so. hold on, hold on. Wait, Courtney, let's put the uh, projection image the uh, flat earth looks like supernatural projection space it's not real it's yeah. uh it's a uh, uh basically again when you if someone goes to a planetarium and and i've, oh, yeah. I've been to planetariums i'm, I'm old enough you if you look Mark, up, on the, up, up on the ceiling you say okay can you see the moon yes does it look spherical yes can you land on it no why not well because it's just an image on the ceiling Who's to say when you don't walk out of that planetarium, you're just not walking into a much, much bigger planetarium, one we didn't build. So, again, this image right here is uh, the idea of a supernatural projection. It's not yep. a real, there's no space out there. Nope. Well, that gets into NASA. So let's go back now. We're going to show the Earth in two different pictures from NASA. We saw it real quickly before in our video. Yeah. Tell us, Mark, on the left is the Earth taken a picture of by NASA satellites uh, 2012? A year oh, yeah, later. You know, both, both, both those images are absolutely fabricated from, from day one. There has never been an accurate shot. And I'm going to send you an Apollo shot here in a second. Uh, I've sent a couple things to Courtney, but I want to send I don't know. I don't know if we can add things, but I know one thing. The, the structure or the area of the uh, United States... What, yeah, why is the United States so Why is it look huge? different? How could, how could this be explained? Because different people did the different renderings. In fact, go back, if you can, to the, oh. uh, the, the well, round earth versus... Think rendering, someone went into a computer Photoshop kind of thing yeah. and created these images. The Earth never looks like this ever, a ever. Absolutely. Ever. The, in fact, the first one of these shots that was ever taken was in 1972. You can look it up. This is not secret information. It's called the Blue Marble Shot. And it is was literally the only photo supposedly taken of Earth from space from 1972. We all know the famous photo from the. Yeah, movie. yeah. Was, there was no other photo taken from 72 up until 2015 when we started taking off. It showed we all have seen it. It shows the bottom part of Africa and the only continent it shows in its entirety, which is great. Two and one with one blow is Antarctica. No one got that. It's like, wait, it's an American space program. Why wouldn't you show the United States, the North American continent? Well, wait, we're going to get to the NASA section. Do not worry. Okay. okay getting to the, NASA's got its own section. Okay. But I'm just setting it up for everybody. Okay. So, so, because, so, you know, Mark, you're, you're a, a wealth of incredible knowledge, but the average person, if they're just seeing this for the first time, you, you got to give them a chance here. Okay. Yeah. So now, well, now well, can back can to I throw it. one more thing? I know we, our time is limited, but I got So you had that asteroid versus the globe. You yeah, remember that globe shot in that asteroid versus the globe? That was that was not even a NASA photo. That was built by a guy named Robert Simmons. That is literally the background for the first iPhone ever done. And uh, people use yeah. that as a comparison. It's like, and in fact, you go to NASA, they have that picture on the wall. No, it's like, 
I, I don't want I don't want to blow the uh, the theory on that one alone. But I, I already spoke to NASA. What NASA says pretty much is they're very careful about the images they release, yeah. and they deny it all. But yeah. we'll get to that some other uh, later on in the show. Okay. But let's just look at the bottom line issue that when you go up high in space, high high above the Earth, you see a horizon straight across. Let's play uh, according to the flat horizon curve that looks like it could be caused by the GoPro camera of someone. Well, you're gonna t- you'll tell us about this image, okay? Talk oh, yeah, to yeah. us this about is... what we're looking at here, Mark. It's your image, talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the famous Red Bull jump. The guy who's jumping is Felix Bumgardner. Right. And he's only jumping from about 130,000 feet, which is not very high at all. It's uh, 20 something miles. And he's, you know, at that height, there is no way you could see the curvature of the Earth. In fact, the curvature is so exaggerated that if that was really where he was, then the Earth apparently is the size of Arizona. Right. So what you're saying is the left is what we all saw from you know right. the promotion of this guy doing this thing. Yeah. And then what actually was happening at the moment is on the right. Yeah, and, and that was the slip-up, which is you look out the cockpit window and it's absolutely flat. In fact, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson went, on a, um, went to a convention. And he was on stage, and he, I can't believe he used it. I mean, we've got a video. It's on my channel. To where he says he was calling out this jump and saying that it was scientifically dishonest because Red Bull was hyping this up. He, and he said it was using a fisheye lens. He goes, at, and here's the interesting. He goes, well, we, don't want, we don't want to promote Red Bull because we're, <laughs> well, yeah. but we're he said at <laughs> he, he said at 130,000 feet, no one can see the curvature of the earth. So if Felix could see it, but Neil says you can't, who's lying? Right, and I'm sorry, I'm going with I'm going with Neil on that. Well, one. well, hold on, that image, that image, and Courtney, if you could put it back for a second, the image on the right, you're saying that's real proof, caught that's, live that's, yeah. of the Earth flat as can be, yep, a, a flat plane, nothing to do with a globe, yep. and that image proves it right there. It may not be a big image, it may not be like if I go to a courtroom, I, I talk about that a lot in our shows. If you go to a courtroom and you're going to show evidence. That's your evidence right yeah. there. That's not adulterated. That's not um, affected. That's Bungard. That, what was his name again? Felix? That's Felix, Felix Bumgardner. That's literally Felix. And you see the earth behind. And, and there it is. So, yeah. so that would be a slip up where they yeah. weren't able to cover. And the GoPro camera on the left, that captured a curve. But the GoPro camera, and I know you've said the same thing about windows on planes. Yeah. The windows create that image. And, well, them- and not not even just that. The windows in the plane do a little bit. But for most people, because I've had people, lots and lots of people that have said, oh, yeah, I've seen the curvature from an airplane. And I go, well, Neil Tyson says you can't even see the curvature from four times. Well, hold on. Let, let's, let's show the next thing we're showing is oh, okay. the, the sign of the, the curvature is is not there. And no matter what level, you'll describe the next image. It's the... Uh, Curvature from high up. Yeah, that's about 120,000 feet, give or take. Now, you notice how flat across it is, right? Yep. So, so why is why is Felix is so curved at 10,000 feet higher? Why is, is it so bent? I know from this sh- image that there's a wider shot and there's foot, you know, moving image. So basically what we're talking about here is no matter how high up you go, yeah. no matter how high up you go, it's as flat as can be. Yep. And again, the reasons we think it's round is because what NASA has told us. Yeah, it's conditioning. It is, it is Orwellian. Um, you, the, the, if you repeat it over and over and over, in fact, pilots have, you know, it's not, and I, I, I try not to insult people. I say, look, it's not that you see the curve. Because people have told me, oh, yeah, I've seen the curve from a mountaintop. It's like, no, you haven't. It's not that you've seen it. You wanted to see it. That's, there's a big difference between wanting to see it and actually seeing it. I go, and the challenge I put four or five years ago now, I said, if you think you see it, see the curvature, fine. Take a picture from an airplane, from a mountain, from blue, and I don't care. Put it on your laptop, hold a straight edge up to it, you know, something like this, hold a straight edge up to it. If it's still, if it's still curved, you send that to me, I will quit flat earth tomorrow. Not a single right, well, email. I know you've said that before to people, but I, I'm going to put up an image now that is not directly related to what we're talking about. But keep yeah. in mind, Mark, you've, you, you, when we look at the sun's rays, how the sun's rays, we're going to show what the sun's rays, how they kind of come into the earth. Yeah. And they're very, very wide. And muscular rays. So basically, this is your point. Your point is that the sun must be really close to the earth yep. to be able to have this kind of pattern of sunlight. 
Yep. But the sunlight, if it was really far away, would bathe the earth in one glow, but because it's close, it close gives you- and not not just close, but very, very small. So no. this, what we're saying is the sun is not 93 million miles away and hundreds of thousands of miles across. It is very, very close, several thousand miles away, but it's less than 50 miles wide, which coincidentally is exactly the same uh, distance we say or the same relationship as the moon, which is why the moon fits exactly in front of the sun. They say it's oh, it's just a coincidence that the moon is 400 times more narrow, but it's 400 times closer. It's like, wow, that is a coincidence. It's really, really great. Okay, so then let's look at some of these uh, proofs that test the flat earth, okay? The idea is that you can go to a location and you can see the test curvature photos, okay? These are the kind of things that I personally recently did, which I'm gonna show in a minute. Mm -hmm. But but when you go and show these images, these these are the test curvature photos. Yeah. I'm not trying to see if Courtney can get that up so we can see it. Okay. So basically what we're looking at here is, and I'll give a quick review and then you can talk about it, Mark. Yeah. Way in the distance is this building on a shoreline. But from where this person is standing, you can't see anything. Nope. When you zoom into it, it's there. Yeah. Now, people who believe the earth is round say, well, it shouldn't be there because the curvature of the earth, that distance. So what, what do you think? is happening here i mean if anyone go out and I'll, I'll, Gordon, yeah anybody a, yeah anybody can do this test it's called um the the really hd technology has changed the game if you would have gone back 20 years ago with a sony shoulder cam you could zoom in as, as far as you want but it's not gonna make a difference because the resolution sucks now though hd hd technology has changed it so what's happened is boats or buildings or whatever they're off in the horizon right they're gone they're gone permanently they're over the other side of the hill the curvature of the earth mainstream science says is eight inches per mile per mile otherwise known as eight inches per mile squared which means eventually not even that far 10 miles 15 miles they're significant objects that should be gone but what happens is you crank up the zoom on your hd camera those those objects now come back into frame why why is that that's not that's not possible and we've seen in fact i put the challenge out to everybody i said find me an object at 100 miles or less in decent weather conditions that you can't see ever well hold on i I did it i did it now but mark not to cut you off but i want to show 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 my first flat earth photo number one i was at the beach here where i live out in in california here and there i am and you can see if, if courtney can or if we can possibly zoom in past me and see these uh, ships and things and the and the and the and land form out there. Sure. I mean, as you go out there, theoretically, some things should fall off, right? Yep. How far away? I don't know if you looked into it, but how far away should those things not be seen anymore? I don't know. I didn't distance this. I really don't know. I didn't check the whether it's Catalina or whatever out there. But I'm going right. to be honest with you. I don't know what to make of this. But you're saying we can go out there and test this. We can find out where those objects out there should start to fall away at a certain distance. And if they fall away and you can't see them anymore, that means the earth is round. But if you you can see it still by zooming in with a telephoto lens or a telescope, that means they're lying to us in your view. Yeah, yeah, they're absolutely lying to us. Um, the, the, they, in fact, they don't want to talk about it. I, you know, the National Geographic thing that I did uh, a couple of years ago where they were the ones that set up the experiment. They said, OK, we want to shoot balloons from nine miles on the other side of the Salton Sea. And they said, we're going to raise the balloons and then eventually they'll be over the, the curvature so then you can see it. But we could see it when they were setting up on the beach yeah. at nine miles. And we and they said, no, you can't. I go, we absolutely we can. Look, it's right there in the camera. And they cut that segment out entirely. They removed it from the piece that they finally aired because they, they there was no excuse they could give for it. Well, and that, by the they, way, yeah, some of the other research you told me to do, I did. And the next image we're going to show mm-hmm. is the military when they're shooting their guns, when mm-hmm. they're planning to, you know, have you know any kind of an encounter with weapons. Yep. They do not correct for the Coriolis effect. Now hold nope. on, you're going to explain that in a minute, but I want to get the image up with the military. Basically, you know, when they're shooting their guns, think of it this way. When they're shooting their guns, they would theoretically have to uh, compensate. Yeah. Describe to me what this means, that they're not 
compensating at all for for yeah. two things um well one you got the curvature of the earth but the big one's the coriolis effect right which is which is the the spinning of the earth you remember the earth spins at a thousand miles an hour supposedly at the equator but Alleg zero allegedly miles an hour right. <laughs> at the north pole and then everything in between and no i have got a subject matter list on my channel covering everything from artillery guys to tank guys to missile guys submarine all branches of the armed forces and they've all said the same thing. We never, ever take into, the, into account into the firing solution the spin of the earth, ever. And yet every once in a while, you'll see some guy on CNN, some sniper. It's always a sniper, right, that's shooting less than one mile. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I took into account the, the curvature and the spin of the earth. It's like, no, you didn't. In fact, I've got one of my best friends is a tank commander, or retired now. And he said, you goes, do you know how hard that would be to do that in a firing solution? Because not only would you have to know you know, windage and elevation, but you'd have to know geographically where you are because the spin of the earth is different in North America than it is in Ecuador. Right, so I, I made a mistake that that effect is the earth being round, of course, spinning, yeah. which of course in the flat earth, it's totally stationary, nothing's happening, yeah. straight as can be, and that's fine. Yeah, um, and the centrifugal, let me throw in the, I, I know you got a lot to cover, but l let me throw in the one more. If people don't get the centrifugal force, what I'm talking about is when you're on a merry-go-round as a kid, you're hanging on the edge, you're barely hanging off. You're in the center, the weather's just fine. If the globe is spinning at a thousand miles an hour, yeah, it's like, well, it's going really, really slow. It's like, well, it's really, really big, sure, but the oceans would be affected, meaning the oceans would go, would completely shrink from the North and South Pole, and you'd get this huge spare tire, like Saturn's rings made out of water. No, hold on, I made a mistake too. I, Courtney, there's one I forgot to show. This is a uh, one, um, uh, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, it says basically, um, no sign of, uh, it's when the smoke is coming up. What did I call this one? Um, oh, smoke rising. Yeah, uh, I thought I had put this in here. Um, I don't see it at the moment. I'm, I might have left that one. Well, out. I can I could describe it for you. It's something yeah, that um, I think Jaron came up with a couple of years ago, which is like like ash clouds, like volcanic ash clouds or big big you know plumes of smoke. When they get up to a certain altitude, the spin of the Earth centrifugal force should take over because remember it should be you know for in order for the atmosphere to catch up it's got to actually be spinning faster at higher elevations and it's not we never ever seen it and by the way the the people that will come in and say oh well you know the drains it drains in the opposite direction in australia toilet water spins in the opposite direction it's like no no no. go to youtube there's a wonderful channel out there not one of our guys called smarter every day he's got like i don't know 20 million subscribers and he did a simultaneous test in australia and north america and the, that is a complete myth, the, uh, the water spinning in one direction and the other. It is literally, you can go to your sink in your kitchen, move your faucet one way or the other, go clockwise, counterclockwise. Total uh, I, I think I left that out, but I, the one I know I didn't leave out, I hope. Courtney, the Flat Earth Southern Hemisphere Flights Mystery, that's a video, I believe. I want to make sure that's a video I put there. Flat Earth Southern Hemisphere Flights Mystery. Okay, play, I'm going to play this video, Mark. Now, sure. I'm going to set it up this way. Sure. Mark convinced me that some of the best evidence that we've got something wrong here. It's remember the old uh, Houston, we got a problem. We'll get to mm. NASA in a minute because NASA is the big cover up. If indeed anyone ever proved that the uh, Earth is flat, NASA would be marched out on a plank and pretty much, you know, you know, taken yeah. the test for their complete obfuscation of reality. Now, um, when you told me to look into the flights of planes yeah. in the Southern Hemisphere, yeah. I was blown away. The fact that planes that are flying from parts of one continent to another in the Southern Hemisphere, they appear to go way out of their way to make yeah. stops for yep. no reason, which, hold on, according to the Flat Earth, there's a reason. We know. Right. But let me play the video that you helped me get a while back. It'll open up the conversation and we'll go from there. Okay. Let's see it. And the music plays, Mark. You can describe what's happening here. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was one of the, the, it was part of the reason I watched the clues. There was a guy from England that was telling me, he's going, look, there's long haul flights in the Southern Hemisphere that don't make any sense. Flights that should be going over. We're talking from South uh, continent, Southern to Southern Hemisphere, South America to Africa to Australia. 
instead of going straight across the South Atlantic or the South Pacific or the Indian Oceans, they take these weird, weird routes that go completely into the Northern Hemisphere and back down. And, and, they, and they only make sense on a flat Earth. They only make sense on a flat Earth. When you when you iron out, when you put it on the AE map, otherwise known as the az azimuthal equidistant map, those exaggerated lines right there, like that one going from South America all the way up to London. Just look look at that flight, to, everybody. Look at what the, what the plane does now. It doesn't go across where it should go straight across. It should go straight the... across. And these flights don't go that way. They always go in these weird, exaggerated double and triple connections. In fact, I've talked to um, corporate travel agents in the Southern Hemisphere. She goes, you have no idea how frustrating it is. It doesn't matter how much money you pay, you can't get nonstops for 99% of the destinations in the Southern Hemisphere. You can't get it. And it's just one of those things that's just been overlooked. But when you convert these, this is the AE yeah, map, which yeah, is the top down. It's, right, a straight, see? it's a straight line. So what Mark is saying, everyone, is that the only way that makes sense for a pilot to go into that kind of configuration yeah. is under a flat Earth model where they're flying across, which, by the way, the UN, the UN kind of an emblem, if you will. Yeah, the UN flag the is the flat Earth map. It's only the, the UN flag is missing something. The so UN flag you, is missing one thing on that flag, and that's Antarctica. It's like, why do you think that would be? Because what all we really did was right there, we looked at the flat Earth as the UN has their yeah. emblem. Yeah. And if you use that as your guide, strangely, that's the only way those flights make sense. If you right. take the earth and you put on a flat kind of plane yeah. and you see the direction those planes are going, they'd only make sense going over those areas properly on a straight line under a flat earth. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant, it's, it's a subtle thing that's been hidden for a long, long time. But because most of the population lives uh, in the northern hemisphere, or in this case, the inner ring, yeah. that we never caught on. It, it and, was brilliant. And by the way, I asked a pilot friend of mine, which I told you about a couple of years ago, and I yeah. keep asking my friend Jim. He gets very, very upset with me because he says, Bob, come on. Come on. Don't yeah. you think I would know? I'm a pilot. I fly all over the world. I've, I, I, no, you wouldn't. How know. could he not know? Tell me no, how he no, doesn't know. The, the pilots don't see. Well, most most planes fly by themselves anyway. But you got to remember the GPS system. The ones that they're going off of is a United States military system. It is not civilian. It was built by the military in the early '90s. It tells them exactly where they think they're going. So as long and most pilots have told me the same thing. It's like, look, all we care about is taking off and landing, and nobody dies. The rest, you know, way, we're, we're, it's filled with busy work. It's like, and, and plus I've talked to pilots said, look, even if we did, you know, let's say a pilot came to the realization and I've got a KLM pilot in Europe who, who, who was fired, you know, who's benched because of this. She said, she, you know, she went to her medical review and she, and she admitted to him, you know, deliberately. And they said, sorry, you're not, you're not flying anymore. And she'd been, oh, hold on. 20, what Jim said to me was just so you know, he said, Bob, we do that because it's the safest way to do it. Because we don't want to, I may be misquoting him a little here, but we don't want to have the long flights and put danger. Maybe there might be a need to go, you know, safer than going way across the ocean. Not, didn't quite make sense to me. No, no, no. It is, uh, every pilot I've talked to says the say, safety isn't their primary concern. It's fuel. It's money. And that is, they will do anything. They will shave, they will change their routes, even on domestic flights, just to save two or three minutes worth of flight fuel. Meaning they wouldn't go out of their way to fly. The one example I have, I, I thought I had the video, by the way. Courtney, the video that we played um, called the, uh, the, uh, the Open, I thought that was longer. I, it seemed like we cut it off. I don't know if we cut it off, but we really want to see... There's something in that video. The evidence that Mark showed me included a woman that was having a baby flying from all the way from um, oh, the Philippines. Yeah, from yeah, the Philippines. Yeah. And all the way. she was, was flying to, to going... L.A., right? Yeah. And for some reason, when she had an emergency, they flew to Alaska. Yeah, they diverted to Alaska and then instead back of... back to L.A. And the only way that would make sense when you have a woman yeah. that is having a difficulty with a pregnancy... Yeah. And it could be lives to save her and the baby, let's say. Yeah. They're going to go the straightest way they can. You're going to go, you're going to stop LA. in Honolulu. No question. Oh, Absolutely. Honolulu, right. Honolulu, way better, you know, way better hospitals, huge population center. And they diverted to Anchorage. Right. So they, in other words, they go really north. Yeah. And then go really south. Unless it's on a flat map, in which right. case it was, it was a straight line straight right. to Anchorage. 
So unfortunately, we can't do it like a documentary series, but we, the, anyone can go and see the evidence Mark has. I can, I can provide it as well. This flight where this woman, she was saved apparently, of course, they went to a strange location yeah. to save her, which made no sense. And like Mark said over and over again today, only on that flat earth map, which by the way, again, is the UN emblem. Yep. Why would the UN, Mark, just before we get to the NASA evidence, which mm -hmm. is a little freaky, I'll admit, I've been dealing with NASA my entire life with UFOs and other mysteries. I mean, it's a tough one to, to handle. Yeah. We'll get to that now. But tell us, what would be the reason in general? I mean, about the bottom line seems to be... Um, why, why would NASA hide it? Well, the bottom line is, when did we know? When did we... We, we figured this out, again, it, we, we had to have we had to reach a technological level and basically we had to have pressurized airplanes so again if you were the king of france in 1600 and you had a map you had the AE map what are you gonna do with it you, there's nothing you can do with it i mean you had wooden ships and you had horses it wasn't until the internal combustion engine was invented to we could even explore which is immediately what we did we sent people to the north pole and then we explored antarctica for years from 1927 all the way through Operation Deep Freeze, which was 1955-56. And that's when they figured it out. That's when they were flying and flying and flying and flying, refueling. It's like, okay, now okay, we so, so let's say for a minute that I'll even try to clarify it even a little better for me, not, not, not for you, Mark. But no, you, that's fine. But you taught me, so I'm going to bring back to the professor what you taught the student, me. <laughs> um, that sometime around, you know, that period of time, early 60s, early space flight, yep. maybe even the Germans, even with their V-2 rockets. I mean... When they realized as a world, as a, as a world, we realized that the earth was flat, yeah. it was because we started to launch rockets. Right. The, the Germans were the first ones to, I believe, to figure it out. Uh, a lot of people don't know that there was nobody on the ice in Antarctica during World War II except for one country, and that was Nazi Germany. And then uh, Operation High Jump, which was the Americans literally go figure they, right after the signing of the surrender of Pearl Harbor, Admiral Byrd, United States Admiral, yeah. takes Operation High Jump, a full blown carrier fleet down to Antarctica to do what exactly? Why are you yeah, taking a full blown carrier fleet? Then, don't forget, you're on the show now, Conspiracy Truth Finders, and we are very aware uh -huh. of the Antarctica mystery because I brought up recently that in a show that Antarctica is a place we can't get to. We're not allowed right. to go there. What yeah. is the official, you're the top expert I could ask this, <laughs> what is the reason the governments give us that we can't go to Antarctica? The official reason, well, now it's layers. Now it is in the end. Well, one, it's because no country, they decided that no country should ever own Antarctica. <laughs> they still won't say why, but the other part is environmental. But wait a but, minute. Ad, wait a minute. Admiral Byrd, he went on a TV show. Yeah. I have that video. You yeah. helped me get it. Yep. Admiral Byrd said that we found amazing things. Oh, yeah. The place is made out of Describe money. Describe to me what he said on a TV show. Like, Yeah, he, he went on a CBS show called The Long Jeans Chronoscope back in 1954. And that, that footage is great. It's wonderful. You can watch it. It's out there on YouTube. And he said that basically Antarctica is made out of money. I mean, it is literally there's a mountain range made out of coal. There's oil. There's gas. Oh, wait, there's wait, 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 wait. Just because I'm trying to focus you on the the the, um, the um, enormity of what we're talking about. Yeah. Admiral Byrd sits on like a meet the press type of show. Yeah. Let's call what Mark said. Yeah. And he tells the interviewers, listen, we found an area, another continent. Yeah. That has all kinds of oil and minerals, and we should be harvesting that. It's beyond anything we've ever imagined. Yep. But then we shut it down. Yep. And then for wow. whatever reason, he goes to his very last mission down there, which was Operation Deep Freeze, right after that. In fact, he was scouting for that during the show, his recon teams. And he goes from 1955-56, and then whatever he found out there, and I think it was the outer marker, the outer barrier, at least the, the beginning of it. They shut it down. The Antarctic Treaty was put into place. The only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. You can download the PDF. It's easy to find online. And it basically says that no corporation from any country can set up shop in Antarctica ever. I know I mentioned time. it recently in the show, and I'll be honest with you. 
it is mind boggling that we as a, as a world yeah. have just accepted the Antarctica mystery because we were, I was looking at actually on a different a venue. I just realized I was on a different venue, but yeah. I, I really believe the Antarctica mystery needs to be unraveled. And if I went into a courtroom myself as your, as your defense attorney, I think it would be a defense attorney to the flat earth mystery or theory, yeah. I'd play Admiral Byrd's interview oh, yeah. right off the bat. I'd say, why would this guy lie? He's one of the most respected explorer type guys that the yeah. military counted on for everything from the operation you mentioned to everything else. Why would he be making the, up yeah, a story? Well, that's just it. He wasn't lying. In fact, the reason that the governments locked this down, you know, there was, I think, a nine or 12 nation original treaty signing and every country had to sign off on it eventually. The reason was just generic. It was just for science. We, we want to preserve it for scientific purposes. It's like, yeah, science, I got to call right? I got to call BS on that. It's like the what oil and gas wouldn't be able to push their way through. They can start fracking in your backyard tomorrow and they aren't even allowed to. It's not it's not even that they can't do it. It's they're not even allowed to talk about it. See, Mark, I, hate to, hate to be the, I hate to be the debunker. And I, again, I don't mean to cut you off, but I hate to be the debunker. But someone needs to be that other person and say there are really other explanations that could explain why we can't get to Antarctica? Nope. Why? Nope. Wait, let me right. finish. We're, we're why we're not allowed to go? Let me finish. Why we're our not civil, allowed to our go civilization? There? there is one consistency in our civilization. I don't care if it's de democratic or communist or whatever, and that is, uh, we are ruled by power and greed and money. That's that is the the overarching theme of. So our, if we're not exploiting it, it means there's we're a reason. Not, it, well, yeah, find me find me something where we walked away from the money. Where it's like it's something. There's only very, very few conspiracies that say. Uh, something uh, oh, hold on. We love we love you on this show. So hold on a second. Let's get to the real cover up then. So in okay. 1960 or so. 60. Yeah. NASA begins their w incredible journey, if you will. Yeah. Into space and yep. trying to fight the Russians. You know, we're trying to beat the Russians. All that stuff. Okay, great. The Apollo 11 astronauts. Let's put a picture up right here, Courtney, of the Apollo 11 astronauts. I interviewed Buzz Aldrin for my own show, Aliens on the Moon, The Truth Exposed, right. for sci-fi just five years ago, right? Yeah, Here's those Buzz. guys, yep. There's Buzz. Strong and Buzz. And According to you and other people, yeah. the fact that they are Freemasons, basically, a lot of the astronauts, these were Freemasons, you think, they were enlisted to carry out the Apollo 11 moon fake as part of a cover-up of Flat Earth, Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You militarize space and you fake the moon missions because the last thing you want is the private corporations to get involved. Uh, All right. Now, let, let's did that for a very long for decades and it worked. So, so the idea of the space hoax, the idea that we even have space where let's just say for a minute when Neil and Buzz and and Collins launched off the pad, yep. everybody saw the rocket go up. Yep. Where the rocket go? Oh, went off into the Pacific. Or the I'm sorry, and the like Atlantic. that movie Capricorn one years ago with with OJ Simpson. Oh yeah, yeah, the Capricorn one movie. If anyone hasn't seen Capricorn one from 1978, the, the it's a brilliant movie on how to fake a space mission. Yeah, they were, they fake going to Mars, okay? But here yeah. in this situation, this rocket had nobody in it. Nope. The rocket None of them went do. up. None of, no rockets ever have any people. That's the last thing. We'll get to that in a minute. Hold on. So there's no one in the. <laughs> no. Cody's going what? Okay. No, no, they don't. We have a picture of Courtney right now. So, so the idea is the rocket goes up, but it does seem to curve a lot. You know, even the oh the, yeah, yeah. The look at you can look at you can Google this all day long. Look up time lapse photo of rocket launch. Any so, rocket in other words, launch. Mars it's, claim is that the rocket is in a in a trajectory of coming down almost from the moment it's going up. It goes yeah, it goes horizontal before it even hits hundred miles. And it and lands in one of the flat Earth oceans, I guess, right? Yeah, just tanks. You just just ditch it somewhere because once no it gets out of visual found, range. No, you... no one, no one ever found pieces of the Saturn V floating around, or no, I mean, no, no. You send them off far enough in the distance where you sink them. And but... all of those, like, even recently, like the Fal Falcon Nine, the other day of oh, SpaceX and NASA. Yeah, I know. If you if you're you're going to toy me with me with that. We might as well get into the whole convertible, red convertible in space BS. Go ahead. So remember when Tesla, uh, they had their little Tesla car, actually. Oh, my God. Space. So can I can I do a 60 real. second rant on that? Yeah, good. Go OK, 
why the Tesla in space absolutely doesn't work. The pressures of vacuum versus non-vacuum. The car, remember, this was supposedly taken straight out of, getting, out of... Cody's mind is getting blown right now. Just like, <laughs> this is supposedly taken out of Elon Musk's, Musk's garage, right? Wasn't retrofitted for space. The tires would have exploded right off the bat. Just, just blown up. I like agree. That exploded. Co- Mark saying that car that was floating in space, everyone saw that the shot would, been, would never happen. It would have, would have been shredded. Every pressurized system, the brake fluid system, the window washer fluid, the hydraulics, everything. I remember, it did it wasn't look funny gas. to me, too. I mean, I saw it that. It wasn't a was gas like, engine. That thing, I mean, the windows from the temperature swings would have spider webbed. The side windows would have turned into just. All right, well, that, that's been show number two on this. But hold on. Let's get to the evidence that we do look like a little, okay. little suspicious according let's play the nasa wires showing fake weight fake weightlessness in the uh iss this is a shot apparently uh, yeah. on the iss yeah it does appear that they're trying to attach wires to the clothing for some reason. What's going on here? Are they trying to make a fake? The, the, simple, the simple answer to this is don't ever tell me that things can't be faked in the space station. Uh, I could find just, uh, just a slew of movies in the last five years that do even a better job than they did. Gravity would be the first one. Interstellar would be the second one. Um, there's so many things that are wrong. Oh, with the, hold on, with the, 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 un, the, un, the uneducated, the you know people out there have never heard about this before. Right. So... Basically, every NASA mission is fake. Yeah. All the NASA scientists, astronauts, teachers, all that stuff never happened. Nope. Oh, you- yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a wonderful photo of the, you know, I know you guys aren't old enough to remember the Challenger disaster. Where the no, 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 no. We'll get to the Challenger. Oh, okay, okay. We'll get to the Challenger. Anyway, so you're saying to me now, hold on, we're building our case now. We're okay. Building our case. Okay. That you're saying... There's evidence that they fake weightlessness to make it look like it's weight by using wires and whatever. Or CGI or whatever. Hold on. on. Yeah. You told me, and I looked into it, that NASA has these underwater experiments they do where bubbles are seen in some of the footage, of course. Yeah. Some of the footage of them in like... Pools, if you will, in yeah. tanks, in, in in literally in you know in in yeah uh, they pools. they don't test in vacuum chambers right. they test They're, in a swimming pool. Some of that footage yeah is out there. You can see astronauts in their suits in water, you know, doing their thing. Yeah. However, when during a space mission, apparently in some of the outer areas of the shots of the astronauts doing a spacewalk or whatever, little bubbles appear yeah. like it's fake footage. And they're really underwater. Well, yeah. we're not going to show that right now, but anybody wants to go check out NASA, Flat Earth Evidence, whatever. Mark can help you. Mark Sargent and we'll, be, we'll give you all this information. They, they stole that technology from uh, James Cameron's 1989 movie, The Abyss. The Abyss. I knew it. Okay, hold on. But Which just take a swimming one. pool, fill the top layer uh, with, with rubber balls. It blacks it I, out. I was ready back three years ago. I was ready to tell Mark, no, now you've gone too far. <laughs> I want I, I take things seriously, but at some point I go like anybody else, a good journalist. No, look at this shot of a it looks like a scuba tank aboard a NASA mission. Check it out. Yeah. Zoom in to this area. And that's part of a video right. where, they yeah, have- they because they had scoop. They have scuba for all their underwater stuff. And NASA's not shy about this. All their underwater training missions, they have scuba assist people. Just people and just scuba outfits. But why would they have a scuba guy in space air tank aboard a mission when they're worried about weight and exactly. everything? Why would you have a actual scuba tank? So what because, do you think? What, what because the, they figured uh, out long, well, some years ago, that the difference between a training mission, filming a training mission, and actually running it as real, there's there's almost no difference. So the they very, very few changes have to be was made. That, was that so, a screw up? Was that a screw up? Just oh, like- yeah, they screwed up. Totally. I mean, they got lazy. I mean, for God's sakes, during the 80s, and you can look this up on it. Just there's some wonderful VHS tapes on it. Well, during the 80s, uh, no one was even paying attention where they had they had they were wearing pressurized helmets, but they weren't connected to anything. Well, so, so Mark, I'll, but I'll give you I'll, I'll give you this. When I saw this, they weren't even tank, wearing gloves. When I, when I saw this scuba tank. Aboard a mission, it made me scratch my head. 
Yeah. And it opened up the next question. Now, before we show the evidence that the Challenger mission, when we lost all our astronauts, teacher, it was a tragedy, awful tragedy. The you know, unless it wasn't. Hold on. Yeah. Before we show your evidence yeah. that these people never died. Yeah. They're alive. They're alive. This means prior to this and after this, every NASA astronaut is lying. They're keeping a, an incredible, you know, secret. It yeah. goes way beyond just the moon landing was fake. Yeah. Space is fake. Yeah. Rocket launches are fake. Yeah. And wait, hold on. These people that tragically died. Okay, Cody, let's see it. The Challenger crew survived image. Now, th when I saw this, I, it made me scratch my head. Take a look at some of the people that are allegedly alive that yeah. are really and, the people. That and the guy and the guy in the lower. Yeah, the guy in the lower left. I've got a video. We went to his house. We found this guy and he's still around. He's still alive now. And now, wait a minute. So, Mark, it's three years ago. We were talking about this. If I did a series on this, yeah. I want to go and knock on the door of these astronauts and go. This looks like you. Exactly. In fact, the, the guy that we talked to, the lower left with the white hair, in fact, he was really weird about it. He said, yeah, I know that, you know, when I was younger, I used to look like him. It's like, we didn't ask that. You know, it's like, what are you, what are you talking about? And, and he was, it, at the very least, the alibi you should have thrown up is, this is what I was doing in 1986. But nope, he did not. He never even brought up 1986. He avoided that question like the plague. And yeah, he's he's there. I mean, well, you listen, know, I, you know full well in you know full well in Hollywood when you try to age actors, it doesn't turn out well. We're not really good at aging people. I wish I wish I could see Courtney right now. Courtney is just like she's staring at this thing. Because I'll be honest with you, it is hard to deny. I mean, and I, after the show's over, Courtney can really look at it. But, <laughs> You know, it's not a joke. These people do look like the people. And why, and why wouldn't you? By the way, we're not we're not talking about tough stuff to do. Look, when people in the government, because remember, all these people are, are government people. Um, almost every astronaut is a colonel or higher in rank in the military. Um, when if you want people to be disappeared, you just witness relocation program. I mean, it's no different than spies. People are told that your spouse died all the time in the military. And this case would be no different. Look, it's like, oh, hey, your thing exploded. Fine, you're in witness relocation. That, by the way, that is the plot of Capricorn One, where they were just gonna put those three astronauts in witness relocation. It's like, no, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna tell the public. It's like, all right, well, we're gonna kill you then. I don't know if it would prove the flat earth for sure, but if you could march a few of those people into a courtroom right now, oh, and you could show they're alive, we got a lot of splaining to do. Uh, well, the, the of, government, uh, in the words the, of Lucy and Ricky, I mean, a lot of splaining to do. On yeah, that it alone. would be it would be tough to do. But again, they all have the same names. Uh, they look. I mean, two of those guys look. <laughs> oh, I mean, ridiculously close to who they are. They all tend to be in the education field, which was weird. They all became professors. Uh, and two of them were twins. Two of them were twins that actually were were the twin members of the astronauts. Well, Mark, I got to be honest with you. There's one last shot we're going to show today. It's a shot of you on this morning show in England recently. Oh, God. Now, I watched the entire interview. I oh, we're going to show the whole thing or just part of it? I watched the whole thing, but we have yeah. a, hopefully a shot of Mark on this morning show. Yeah. And so there are people now in England that just recently got a good you know, rendition of a little of what we're talking about here. Mark, what do you think the next step is if we're talking about it from England on the morning show? Like that's like a Good Morning America type show. Right. You know, or CBS This Morning. Yeah. I mean, where are we? It's like it's 2020. Uh, we, hopefully the conspiracy president, which actually he'll be very good for this show after he's done. I'm sure we'll, we'll basically, you know, Donald yeah. Trump. But where are we? On this mystery, what are you mean as far as how, how far along are we? How many people know and how but many people? No, 
How many people are flat earthers? Oh, millions, millions and millions of people. I mean, the ninety percent of our community is still in the closet because they're they're worried about. I've I've talked to celebrities. I've talked to people in the you know captains of industry who won't come out because, like, for example, of what happened to Kyrie Irving. You know, Kyrie Irving was so fine. Wait a minute, so what happened to Kyrie Irving? My kids love him. He's a great right. player. He talked about the flat earth. He's very articulate. Yep. He was saying if you do oh, all he's the VP, research. He's VP of the Players League. So yeah. what happened? He was talking about it. B.O.B., the musician. Shaquille O'Neal was on board until yeah, his sponsors decided he wasn't on but board. But they stopped pretty yeah. quickly. What happened? Why did this kind of like get muted? Well, it well, it didn't get muted. The the 2020 happened. I mean, I was on the we were on the verge. I did. I did conferences in seven countries last year and was just crushing it. We were everywhere. We, we could do no wrong. And then all of a sudden, I remember I was flying. In fact, I was flying back from that interview, which you showed. And I remember just before I got on the plane, some woman came up to me and, and had a clipboard. She goes, have you been to China in the last two weeks? And I was going, oh, what's this about? And then, I mean, literally, I was supposed to go back to London for a commercial thing that was going to happen. And then everything gets shut down. We we're all, we're all we're, we we never went away. In fact, we just did a conference in South Carolina a few weeks ago, where it went really really well. And but Mark, Courtney, the last thing I want to show is let's put that domed Earth up one more time. That fr- yeah. maybe maybe the uh, the uh, front front article, the article from uh, Skeptic or that is fine. Yeah, Mark, let's let's look at this one more time. Okay, sure. this is the reality. Who built this thing? <laughs> who, is the, who is the commander of this? Courtney built it. Thing? Courtney built it. I, I, I have on good authority. No, no. Uh, her cat built it because I saw the cat walk in the background. The um, uh, somebody, an old, a civil, one, only one of two answers here. Who built this place? What, first, let's get the obvious out of the way. It had nothing to do with us. We were not responsible in the slightest. No different than the pyramids of Egypt. You go to Cairo, you realize those people had nothing to do with this. It's either an older civilization that's much more powerful and advanced than ourselves or the divine. And at that point, you're really kind of split in hairs because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. And by the way, there's no space. So nope. anybody trying to build a rocket like SpaceX or whatever, they must have been brought into it recently. I mean, Elon Musk like put through cold water on UFOs completely and said there are no aliens. If there oh, were yeah, aliens, yeah, yeah. we'd have cameras shooting everywhere, seeing you know. Yeah. Our now there phones. are there are things flying around. Let's let's get this. Let's make something very very clear for me, which is people will say, "Would you believe in UFOs?" Yeah, I absolutely do believe in UFOs. I've seen them. You want to you want to watch UFOs on a regular basis? Get night vision binoculars. Get your eyes adjusted and start looking up in the sky. They're flying around all over the place. However, because UFOs work just fine with their headlights off, kind of like cars. No one gets that. I don't know why. But does that mean that they're from Mars and Jupiter and Venus? No. How'd they get in the dome? How'd they get inside the dome? I think, well, I think they're just older versions of us. I think that every civilization on in this world gets to hang on for four or five thousand years or when they discover where they are. And then they move on like a graduating class. You know, what's the old saying? You don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. Oh, by the one last thing for today, Mark's theory about our atomic explosions. We've been trying to kind of like test out like we've so we've launched atomic bombs, right? Mm -hmm. They're within the dome. That don't sound like a good plan. If you got a dome and you're launching atomic bombs. Well, isn't that's a that's a guy thing, isn't it? I mean, you see a wall for the first time. It's like, get the cannon. Right. And it's like cannons not ah, working. What else it. we got? Can so, we yeah, when they were when they were hammering on that thing for four years from uh, 1958 until 1962, literally, you can look this up, the high altitude nuclear explosions where they were just hammering it. And I think after the first shots, they were kind of mapping it out because it's the best way to kind of use it like a paintball gun, trying to figure out how where where it is, because then when you do your space program, then you can arc things over so they don't just crash into it. Mark, I got to ask you, if we go, if we went to court tomorrow and we wrap the show right now like a courtroom right now. Yeah. What is the one piece of evidence you would want the jury to be remembering as they go into the jury booth there or jury room? Uh, normally, I have a five point thing, but I'll give you the one point. My, my the strongest one is the one I didn't come up with, the one that everyone did on their own, which is they everyone ran to the beach with long distance photography cameras or HD cameras and they just shot off into the distance i go remember that you can only see so far you know granted the atmosphere is thick we're not just breathing in nothing here there's a thickness kind of like a soup 
But there are objects off in the distance which you should not be able to see, and you now see them. That is by far and away the the scene is believing a picture is worth a thousand words. Oh, by the way, no and no media no meteors are coming in from space. So not from space. I don't know what's making those. Well, things when, when, there, when but, a meteor does come, because we've seen them come in, like the one in Russia. I mean, we saw this thing it, 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 it exploded. It caused all kinds of problems. I mean, you see them come in, but you never see them land. That's also weird. You'd think you'd see. You know, we've got all sorts of great footage of things flying around and and going down but very, very few craters that actually happen. I mean, you know, well, there's a big one in Arizona and the Gulf of Mexico, but so where are all the meteors what, what, that are landing in the ocean? Why don't we have a meteor tsunami every two years? Wait, wait, wait. What, what do you do with all this now? How do you operate now as a daily life? I mean, what are you doing with your flat earth? What's the plan? Uh, just to see if we can hit critical mass, hit the hundredth monkey effect to where enough people know to where it's actually cooler to, to talk about it than to not talk about it. Why can't some really rich guy like the uh, movie contact years ago, that guy who was helping, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Had, had character. Hadden. Couldn't, yeah. Couldn't he build or she build a huge rocket and get up there and hit the hit the wall. Well, it, well, if you're gonna do that, why not just buy, not just buy um, seven, triple seven, load it with fuel, and you know head on to the Antarctic ice? The reason is, and it, the system works in to their favor, <laughs> is that the billionaires have a lot to lose. Billionaires are got that way because they they worship the the money. And they're not going to worry. You know, all you have to do is get one call from a government agency that says, yeah, national security. You go there. We're going to seize everything. We're going to destroy your legacy. No one will even remember you. And that's well, it. I, that's I have to say, one of the reasons why I'm glad we showed President Obama talking about it back in 2015, 16 yeah. period, was I was intrigued that other people were talking about it. Yeah. Four years later, I wonder where we are. But I'll tell you, Mark, as we sign off. Yeah. I'm going to follow you, keep following you, and hopefully the day will come that evidence will be presented that will be incontrovertible, I hope. But right now, my mind is blown a lot like Courtney. I got to tell you, every time I think about the flat earth, my brain goes like, how can it be? But I will be honest with you, there's some evidence here that needs to be looked into, especially my favorite one is off the ocean. That's why I went and did my little yeah. test. If you could prove that the flat earth does, uh, the, or the you know, round earth isn't creating that effect where something falls off beyond the horizon and you can't see it anymore. Yeah. If you can prove that doesn't exist, we've got something. I think so. I wish we could do that like, uh, like national TV, like tonight, prove it <laughs> once and for all. Then, we're, then we have something. But anyway, I want to thank you, Mark, for being on the show. Very welcome. It's been a long time and I look forward to seeing all your great work in the future. And that's a wrap for us today on Conspiracy Truth Finds of the Bob Kiviet. We'll see you soon.